not 31, let's pick up the discriminant. So the discriminant is a number. We're going to call it capital D. It's the radicand of your quadratic formula. So it's the b squared minus 4ac. It's the part that's under the radical from the quadratic formula. So that gets its own vocab term called the discriminant, capital D. All right, b squared minus 4ac, determined from the coefficients of the quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. The discriminant is the expression under the radical in the quadratic formula. So we're going to practice in example 8 just calculating the discriminant. And then in example 9, I'm going to talk about what the discriminant tells you about the number and the type of solutions that a quadratic equation would have. So in example 8, I said calculate the value of the discriminant for the following quadratic equations. So before we just go marching into this, Keep in mind that if you want to calculate the value of the discriminant, you need your equation in standard form set equal to zero. So I have that in part A, okay? So I can see right here, A equals 4, B equals negative 12, C equals 9. So then if I wanted to calculate the discriminant, it would be B squared minus 4AC. So let's see what we're getting here. B squared would be negative 12 squared minus 4 times a times c. Okay, well, negative 12 quantity squared is 144. Um, 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 9 is actually 144. So I'm going to get, for example, a that my discriminant is 0. Okay, great. So let's just keep that in mind. I'll put it over here, that my discriminant is 0 for part a. Okay. Now, take a look at the equation in part b. Yes, it's quadratic, it has that squared term, but it is not set equal to zero. So the first thing I need to do is move the five over. Now again, you can either move the five over or you can move the three x squared and the x over, but you need to set your equation equal to zero. So here I have three x squared plus x plus five is equal to zero. All right, so we know a is three, b is one, c is five. Let's get our discriminant. So d is going to be equal to b squared minus 4ac. So in this case, we will have 1 squared minus 4 times 3 times 5. So we are looking at 1. All right, 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 5 is 60. So I am looking at negative 59. So for this example, I get a negative discriminant of 59. Okay, so here my discriminant was zero, here it was negative 59. Great. All the discriminant is, is the, the, that quantity, that expression that was under the radical in your quadratic formula. All right, so whatever that radicand was. So moving to C, I'm running, in, running into the same problem. This is not set equal to zero. So again, you could move the 2x squared to the right, or you can move the 6x and the 7 to the left. For me personally, I like having a positively coefficient, so the, even though it's more work to move the two terms over, I'm still going to do it that way. So I'm going to have 2x squared, oops, not plus 6x, excuse me, minus 6x, minus 7 is equal to 0. All right, and then here would, this would give me a was 2, b was negative 6 and c was negative 7. So my discriminant is always b squared minus 4ac. So we are looking at 2 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 7. So that is 4. Okay, 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times negative 7 is positive 56. Oh, and actually, sorry, I'm just taking a look at my work. This should be b squared, and I wrote a squared. Let me, let me reverse this, or not reverse this, let me fix it. I'm making all sorts of typos at the end of this. Love it. Okay, here we go. So b squared is negative 6 squared minus 4 times a times c. That's very different. Okay, so now negative 6 squared is 36. All right, 4 times 2 is still 8. 8 times negative 7 is negative 56, but we're subtracting that, so this should be plus 56, which is 92. All right, so for this last example, for C, 
I get that my discriminant is 92. So just taking a look at what we have between A, B, and C, I want to point out that here we had a, a discriminant of zero, here we had a negative discriminant, and here we had a positive discriminant. And those three types of discriminants are going to get played out in example nine. They tell, tell us different information about the number and types of solutions we have to each of these quadratic equations. All right, so let's take a look at example nine, and I will see you in a bit. Bye.